So here we go, tipping it off, Elisa Kinane and Ayoka Lee. And it's Yoki winning the tip for K-State. Serena Sundell for three and cashes it in. An early start to the All Big 12 freshman team honors. We take a look at the starting lineups presented by Capital One today. It is experience versus youth. A couple of graduate players and Raina Perez, one of them answers on the other end. Off to a hot start here in Reynolds. Just a couple haymakers on both sides of the floor. And Serena Sundell, she struggled a bit against Washington State to score. That is a great sign for the Cats that she is being aggressive early. Into a Yoka Lee, able to come up with it. Puts it up off the back iron, and Elisa Kinane brings it in. Keep an eye on how NC State chooses to guard Aoka Lee. That time they had two bodies around her. Kunane can hold her own, but they're going to bring some help. Perez, little heat check there to start us off. Bodies on the floor, and a jump ball, possession arrow. Take a look at head coach Wes Moore, ninth season at NC State. Time ACC Coach of the Year. Seventh among active coaches with those 778 wins. It was whistled a foul and it was on Elisa Kinane, so that's something to keep an eye on. Wow, that is surprising. I thought that was just a scrum and a jump ball, but already an early foul on Kunane one minute in. That's why when we panned to Westmore, he did not look too happy. Pair of twins on this Kansas State team as well, both freshmen, the Glenn twins. And there's Ayoka Lee getting her first basket of the game, and KC with a two point lead. Help side was a step too late from Kai Crutchfield, and Ayoka Lee did a good job of getting position inside on Elisa Kune. Ayoka averages over 22 points a game. Perez open for three. Looks like she kind of second guessed a little bit there and turned it over. Here's Jalen Glenn with the ball. Sister Briley now. Briley on the drive. Perez guarding tough shot. Just rolls off. Perez looking to lead the break here. Jakia Brown Turner off the bounce. Emily Ebert brings in the rebound. Lots of jumpers so far for NC State. Even off a miss, K State is playing that 2 3 zone. It looks like they will stay in that zone for most of the game to try to help out Yoki Lee inside with Kunei. Nice fake for Serena Sundell. Now five points in the game. She started out a bit slow, only had five points in the first round matchup against Washington State. They needed her to be more aggressive. Here's Elisa Kunei, her first touch of the game, and Yoki Lee swats it straight down, sending a message here early. Goodness gracious, Ayoka Lee, a take no prisoners mentality. Yoki swats it back out. NC State fans wanted it over the back there, didn't get it. Wow, even this crowd reacted with a ooh, and we've got a lot of NC State fans in this building. Hands straight up, got pretty much all ball, maybe a little contact, but I think Kunane initiated that contact. And that is a message sent from Aoka Lee. What do we say, Sam? Two great post players in this game. That, if you watch anything, I mean, watch the whole game, right. but I would have one of your eyes always watching Yoki Lee and Kunane inside. Jakia Brown, Turner's three in and out. Race for the rebound. Ebert on the floor with it, looking for help. And a jump ball call. Possession arrow will stay with NC State. Sam, we know that NC State was on spring break, okay? So Saturday, this crowd felt a little more gentle. Subdued, yes. I think this crowd is a little more hostile so <laughs> far today, and I think we can thank the students for that that are in both end zones. Travel. Kayla Jones, one too many steps. Second turnover here in the first quarter for NC State. There's head coach Jeff Mitty, eight seasons at the helm for K-State. Huge part in orchestrating what has been an 11-win improvement from last year to this year. They won only nine games last year. You head to this season, now 20 wins on the season. This K-State team looked so much more comfortable early in this game. It felt like there were some nerves against Washington State. The Cougs start, or the Cats, excuse me, start three freshmen. 
But these three freshmen look like they feel good in their second NCAA tournament game. Yoki Lee tangled up with Elisa Kinane. That's her second foul. That's huge. That's absolutely huge. This is the last thing that NC State wanted. And K-State does a good job of going at her, knowing she has one foul. Get it in there. Let Ioka Lee go to work. And Lee is one of the best in the country at catching the ball high and keeping it high. And now Camille Hobby, number 41 for NC State in white, the junior veteran backup, is going to have to play for pretty much the entirety of this first half, Sam. Wow, that is huge. Kanane on the bench, pair of fouls, just a couple of minutes into this first quarter. NC State down nine to three, 6.30 left to go in quarter one. Kayla Jones on the free throw line, double team there. See that two, three zone. Hobby with the spin move in the paint. They're gonna need a big quarter and a half from her and a good start off the bench for the junior out of Jacksonville, Florida. That shows how much this NC State team has faith in Camille Hobby. She comes off the bench, she's Kunane's backup. They go right to her on the first offensive play that she's in, and she has a great move to score on the 6'6", Yoki Lee. Rebecca Dallinger for three, that's no good. Kayla Jones with the board. Jones fading away from the elbow, count it for Kayla Jones, a 6'1 graduate from Janesville, North Carolina. Kayla Jones is so versatile. She can bang inside, she can play the four, rebound with the best of them, but she can also go coast to coast and score in the mid-range. Sundell in and out, that was close to falling. Out of bounds, it will be NC State basketball. There are very few players in the women's game that can play the four and be as physical as they need to be defensively, but then take the rock and go coast to coast. And then Camille Hobby says, I'm not afraid of you, Yoki Lee. What a bucket from Hobby. Coach Westmore has been really impressed with the improvement of Camille Hobby underneath. Kayla Jones, a long three. Five points for Kayla Jones in the game. Kayla Jones got hurt last year in the first round of the NCAA tournament. She missed the next two games was a big reason why NC State missed out on the Elite Eight. She is making the most of her opportunity so far in this year's tournament. 7-0 run for the pack. They are back in the lead. Foul going against Kayla Jones, though, on the drive from Sundell. Jones has to be careful. Right now, she is a, a big rebounding presence for them with Kunane on the bench with two fouls. She has to be acutely aware, which we know she is as a fifth year senior, that she cannot pick up that second foul in this first quarter. Well, Serena Sundell, an incredibly talented freshman, a huge reason as to why Yoka Lee has had so much success this year. Unanimous selection to the Big 12 All-Freshman team. Seven to 10, K-State back in the lead. Kansas State had only five points in the first quarter in their first round game on Saturday. Already got 11 today. Hobby trying to create space. Tough shot there. Here's Dallinger, top of the key. Ty Crutchfield, one of the best defenders in the entire ACC. Knocks that one out, jump ball on the floor, staying here with K-State. What a start. 11 to 10, K-State out in front of the one seed, NC State. Somebody's going to the Sweet 16. Stick around, we got a lot more left in Reynolds. Including Barack Obama back in September of 2011. Derek Wittenberg in the stands today. NC State guard on that 83 national title team under coach Valvano. You see him and you think survive and <laughs> advance. And that's what NC State and Kansas State are both trying to do. Camille Hobby now with four points. Hobby into the game because Alicia Kanane picked up two early fouls. 
Camille Hobby's presence in this first quarter exemplifies what makes NC State so good, and it's their depth. You lose a player like Kunane, who hasn't played since the first couple minutes with those two fouls. You bring in Camille Hobby, and you haven't missed much. Dallinger looking for baseline, kicks it out. Laura Mackey over the backboard, out of bounds. So the Wildcats over their last six now from the floor. Started out real hot. NC State just kind of turned it on a little bit, despite Elisa Kinane being on the bench. Kansas State only shoots 29% from three on the season. They were three for 14 from three against Washington State. They're going to have to make some threes this afternoon. We know that. Bobby got fouled on the way up, so she'll go to the line to shoot two. Winner of this game will advance to the Sweet 16, face the winner of number four, Oklahoma, and number five, Notre Dame. That game is coming up at 6 Eastern on ESPN2. NC State, the one seed for the second straight season. Lost in the Sweet 16 last year. And I can't wait for that Oklahoma-Notre Dame game. If you like offense, you're going to want to turn that one on. Shooters everywhere. Taylor Robertson for Oklahoma, one of the best shooters in the country. Olivia Miles, superstar freshman for Notre Dame. That game's going to be a fun one. Already had a ton of upsets this tournament so far. Could we have more? Mackey 0 for 2 from the floor since she has come into the game. NC State looking to push. Perez, transition three. Reina Perez is doing what she does. She makes it Reina. Picking up right where she left off in that first round game against Longwood. Largest lead of the game for NC State. Perez had 16 against Longwood. She's got six today. Sundell turning it over. Kai Crutchfield leading the break two on two for the pack. Bounce pass to Hobby. Double teamed in there, lost it, and Mackey picks it up. That's a great de decision and a great play that would work against almost anyone but Aoka Lee. Her mobility at six foot six is so impressive. She got down the floor and was able to get there just in time to guard Hobby, who's also running the floor well. It, it's unbelievable to see her in person. There are not many six foot six people, men or women, that can run the floor like she can. Sundell trapped in the corner, lost it, and turned it over. Third turnover for the Wildcats here in the first quarter. Reina Perez was so good in the first round. She has been locked in. Kayla Jones sees that Jalen Glenn leaves Perez for a split second and finds her. And you know that's a knockdown from Perez. And that's Kayla Jones playing a true point yeah. forward. 13 to 2 run, three threes in the first quarter. Perez was looking to make it four, and Riley Glenn got pushed. As she came down with the rebound, foul goes against Jakia Brown Turner. That's her first. That is a good call. You have to let an airborne player land. And Jakia Brown Turner did not let her land as much as the NC State fans didn't like that one. That's a good call. Wildcats over the last six from the floor into Yoki. No good. Had a point blank shot. Was disrupted by Camille Hobby, though. Kansas State still in that 2 3 zone despite a couple made threes from the Wolfpack. Jakia Brown Turner, nice hesitation, fouled on the floor. Going against Ayoka Lee, her first foul. I believe they called her for extending her hands in the contact on the floor before Jakia Brown Turner went up. If she had just stayed back, kept her hand straight up, she's just so hard to shoot the ball over. There's no need to even put your hands on the dribbler. And she knows that. <laughs> I'm not saying anything she doesn't know. How about Jada Boyd hustling for the rebound? And we have a whistle stoppage of play. I'm not sure that NC State fans love it, but the officials go into the sideline here.
The only thing I can think, okay, Sam, yeah, is perhaps it's a clock issue. Yeah, so the shot clock reset to 17. That is unfortunate because yeah. <laughs> I believe it was Jada Voigt who was Correct. in her shooting motion and they blew the whistle. Simone Goodrich checking in for Kansas State. Sundell will check out. The shot clock skipped a few seconds is what we're hearing. They're going to set it back at 15 here for NC State. So still NC State ball. On a seven or run, Hobby. Too strong. And Ayoka Lee brings in the rebound. How does Kansas State get Ayoka Lee more involved in this game? It started out, they were able to find her, but now it seems like Camille Hobby's done a pretty good job under there. I think they've done a decent job of getting her the ball, but NC State has been excellent in whichever guard is guarding the furthest K-State player in the opposite corner. She is automatically in help side, coming even further over than you might in a normal situation. And so just the presence of another white jersey in help side, even if it's a shorter player like Reina Perez, it deters the guards from throwing the ball into Lee. So I think you still have to get it to her and let Aoka Lee keep drawing fouls and go to work. But State has, State, NC State, has done a really good job of being in help side where they're supposed to be. 30 seconds to go here in what has been an exciting first quarter. Kansas State on a scoring drought of four and a half minutes, though. Wolfpack on a 7-0 run. Jada Boyd got bumped by Ayoka Lee, and Yoki Lee's got two fouls now. That is excellent work by Jada Boyd. She was posting up a smaller guard, and Ayoka Lee had to come over and help. And they're doing a great job of going at Ayoka Lee. Two fouls on Kunain early. Let's try to get two fouls on their superstar in Yoki Lee. And State, even though they have made a couple threes, I think the point of emphasis in the huddle was we have to keep going inside because with Kunain having those two fouls, the best thing we can do is to get Lee in foul trouble as well, and they've done that. So Kansas State has to bring in Taylor Louder back. The sophomore, she is 6'7", but hasn't played a ton this year. Foul goes against Jada Boyd, her first. So we talked about at the top of our show, two All-Americans battling it out. It has been a battle, but they picked up some fouls. Two fouls early for both Kanane and Ayoka Lee, and they're on the bench. And that's basketball. Sometimes, especially with these post players, foul trouble is going to happen. But if you're NC State, you're feeling a lot better now that Ayoka Lee also has two fouls. Going to be fascinating to see what these two coaches do in the second quarter and how much each of these superstars play. Also, Sam, how many teams can bring out 6'6 six, six and right. go to 6'7 six, on the bench? Goodness gracious. Louder back from Appleton, Wisconsin, makes both free throws, big free throws at that. Four-point deficit, three to shoot for Perez. Fading away at the buzzer, no good. So we end the first quarter, NC State with a four-point lead. The Wildcats are right there, though. Second quarter coming up next. And Notre Dame is one of the few teams that beat NC State this year. Only three teams did. And there's a possibility of an all-ACC Sweet 16. Of course, NC State needs to handle their business, and Notre Dame would have to win at Oklahoma. And these are two teams very familiar with each other already. Speaking of fam familiarity, both of these teams played earlier this year as Kai Crutchfield banks one in. That was from two. Foot was on the line. NC State won comfortably over Kansas State in that WNIT preseason game, 90-69. to 69. Back on the other end, nine points now for Serena Sundell. Kansas State did not make a field goal for the last seven-plus minutes of the first quarter as Kai Crutchfield got fouled on the way up for three by Sundell. NCAA Men's Basketball Championship Sweet 16 begins Thursday at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on CBS and TBS. For more information on tournament game times and networks, go to NCAA.com.
Second foul on Serena Sundell. As Crutchfield cashes in on the first. So now two fouls on Sundell, two fouls on Aoka Lee. As weird as it sounds, because Aoka Lee is one of the best players in the country, Kansas State almost can't afford to put Sundell on the bench like they can with Lee. They can bide some time because of Kunane's foul trouble, but they need Sundell at that point guard spot. And she scored almost all their points at this point, nine of their 15. So five points now for Kai Crutchfield. Again, you have three true freshmen on the floor for Kansas State. The Glenn twins, Serena Sundell. Got her back in on the post as a sophomore, and Simone Goodrich is a junior. Playing against a very experienced NC State team. Louderback, double team, looking for help. Finds Sundell. Shot clock violation near. Just Excellent defense off. by NC State. They are a man-to-man -man team. You are really never going to see them play zone. And they are so connected in that man-to-man. -man. Camille Hobby. Oh, what a post oh. move and a step through for Camille Hobby. Camille Hobby going to work. She may come off the bench, but she is playing like a starter. Her teammates absolutely love it. Elisa Kunane dapping her up. She had Lauterbach just confused. Kelsey, thank you. You guys are right. You look at the balanced scoring for this team. Camille Hobby was asked to step up with those early two fouls from Kanane, and she has. The top two scorers for NC State today are not on this graphic that you're seeing. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Their depth is what separates them. She is NC State's leading scorer right now. That is what we call efficiency. And when you can bring Hobby, Jada Boyd, and Diamond Johnson, who has the ball right now for NC State, who is electric offense coming off the bench. That is quite the luxury for Westmore. And still comfortable with Camille Hobby in the game. Ayoka Lee has come back in for Kansas State. She has two fouls. Six to shoot. Kai Crutchfield into Hobby. Working on Ayoka Lee. Hobby powers her way through. Just couldn't finish at the rim. Keep giving the ball to Hobby. Aoka Lee has those two fouls. They're guarding Hobby one-on-one. -on -one. There's not much help. There's no one else that can guard her. So NC State has to keep pounding it inside. Another scoring drought for K-State. They have not really been able to get the ball into Aoka Lee. Lee now out of the three-point line. Goodrich, baseline jumper. Way too strong, and Perez back the other way. Diamond Johnson into the game. Just so many players on this NC State team that can hurt you in a variety of different ways. Jada Boyd, the mid-range. These fours and fives for NC State, Boyd, Javi, Kunane, Kayla Jones, they are showing absolutely zero fear versus Aoka Lee when they get in one-on-one -on -one situations. Part of that may be, Sam, because they played Kansas State in November. And so they have that experience of what it's like to go up against someone her size. It's a great point. Diamond Johnson takes it away from Briley Glenn. Fifth turnover of the game for the Wildcats. Johnson, cash for Diamond Johnson. The sophomore guard out of Philadelphia transferred over from Rutgers and has really found her role here, accepted her role. The ace off the bench for Westmore and a 10-0 run for NC State now. And Sundell, too many steps. Couple of turnovers for the freshman. NC State is the best three-point shooting team in the Atlantic Coast Conference at 38% on the year. Diamond Johnson is one of the many weapons that can do that. Stop. Hot bottom. ACC Sixth Player of the Year this year, Diamond Johnson. Perez gets to the free throw line. Tough shot. What a make. 
Verena Perez. Eight now today. She had 16 and led the team in the first round. Her mid-range is so smooth. She attacked to that elbow, and she was looking for Hobby. But Aoka Lee did not leave her enough and didn't commit to help side. So Reina Perez was able to knock that down, and Lee didn't want to leave Hobby. It's a pick-your-poison situation. That's Serena Sundell, 12 of the team's 18 points. She is keeping them in the game. This is big time from a true freshman who Coach Mitty joked just turned 18, is just able to go see an R-rated movie in here in front of 5,500 Wolfpack fans doing what she's doing. Johnson so quick off the drive. Tried to find Boyd underneath. Out of bounds, K-State basketball. So NC State has extended the lead here a little bit, 31 to 18. But NC State, Kelly, can hurt you in so many different ways. Sam, you know I love puns, and they say when it rains, it pours. <laughs> and Reina, the forecast is for some precipitation. He is playing so much more confidently, and Diamond Johnson, right. who is instant offense coming off the bench as well. Seven different players have scored for NC State in this game. Just three players have scored for Kansas State in this game, and Serena Sundell has 12 of those 18. the job Camille Hobby has done guarding Ayoka Lee. Good pass there, though. And NC State has decided they're going to give up a few of those. Camille Hobby is supposed to deny she's getting up around Ayoka Lee and forcing her into help side. Well, sometimes because NC State's playing their two point guards together, you're going to have a much smaller player help side, and Ayoka Lee's just going to score that. But if they can limit her to 15, 16 points, she only has six right now, they'll take it. Reina Perez off to yet another good start here in this one. Ten points, four for seven from the floor. Skip pass over to Briley Glenn. Here's Emily Everett. They're giving her room. Everett now into Yoki Lee. Fading away there. Shot was a bit short. Back the other way goes Kayla Jones and company. Diamond Johnson with the runner. Stole it right back. Knocked it over to Kayla Jones. That is what I would affectionately call uh, we're just playing basketball kind of move, right? You try to shoot that floater over Aoka Lee. Well, Diamond Johnson is about 5.5. Uh, five, five. That's going to be tough. But Aoka Lee doesn't see her. She's so quick. She hits that ball away and gets the two points back. That's just playing basketball like you're playing outside in the street. Sindel's shot. No good. Jakia Brown-Turner brings it in. 35 to 20 now, under three to play in the second quarter. Diamond Johnson, corner three, count it! Oh man, Diamond Johnson, a bonfire off of the bench. You can see why she is the ACC sixth player of the year. Five for nine from long range for the pack here. Riley Glenn in and out. Couple of those for K-State. Another 7-0 run. Jakia Brown-Turner now hands it off to Hobby. Hobby double teamed and got fouled on the floor. Diamond Johnson can knock down the three ball. Great ball movement by NC State. They pass that thing all the way around the horn and Diamond Johnson knocks it down. She misses this floater. Ioka Lee doesn't even realize she's right there. So pesky and such a smart play by Diamond Johnson to stay with it. Yeah, as a team, they averaged just about seven and a half threes per game. They also averaged 34 points in the paint. Just kind of going towards that balance conversation we were talking about. Well, and for, for NC State, it's not just the balance in terms of who's scoring. It's the balance in terms of how they score. They can score in the paint. They're 27-1 and one this season when they outscore other teams in the paint. But they could go off and hit 12 threes. You just don't know because of all the shooters they have on the floor at a given time. For to shoot, Jakia Brown-Turner gets a friendly roll here inside Reynolds.
9-0 run for NC State. They lead by 20 now. No points in the last two and a half. Camille Javi and Aoka Lee are fighting inside. <laughs> you mentioned in our open this is going to be a physical game where you may come out with some bruises. Well, that's what we're seeing inside. And Yoki Lee never stops moving. She never gives up on a play. I think simply put, one of the best players in the game right now, Yoko Lee, at 20 points in the first round win. Of course, came to national and international prominence with the 61-point game earlier this year against Oklahoma. It's been a tough ride, though, when you have an NC State team that's shooting just under 60% from the floor in the game so far. Kayla Jones has nine points, five rebounds, three assists. Kansas State truly plays a four-guard lineup, but Kayla Jones is so versatile. She is effectively that second post player out there for NC State, and she's been able to have her way with whatever K-State guard is attempting to slow her down. Nice spin move for Laura Mackey. Role player for this team averages five a game. Out of Baileyville, Kansas. Did not score in the first round game. Gets her first points of the NCAA tournament. Talk a lot about the seniors on this team. Kayla Jones with the floater. Hobby fouled on the shot. Some say basketball is not a contact sport, but those people have never played basketball, especially inside. And this is what I mean about Yoki Lee. She never stops moving. She's very aware of that three-second call. She knows how long she can hang out. And she continues to play. There are other post players that would have just given up on that play and said, all right, I'll try to get an offensive rebound. But my team, she didn't touch that ball the whole play. But she still kept moving. Second quarter, NC State outscoring Kansas State 26 to 11. 15 seconds left to go here in the second quarter. Kansas State looking to end on a high note. Into Ayoka. Good ball movement here. Dallinger for three. Count it. Rebecca Dallinger. Able to end it on a high note. NC State, though, 43, Kansas State, 27. Unbelievable what NC State was able to do with their best player, All-American Elisa Kunane, on the bench for the vast majority of that first half. NC State looking to make their fourth straight trip to the Sweet 16. In the meantime, we'll send it over to our friends in the studio, Kelsey Riggs, Monica McNutt. And time they came in here in the preseason, WNIT did have their points, but it has been the supporting cast outside of those two for K-State that have really struggled. Someone else has to step up and, and help that scoring load, and Elisa Kunane has to be careful. She has two fouls. This may be her last game in Reynolds Coliseum as she is a senior, and so I think she wants to stay on the floor. She's got to be very careful early. Emily Ebert ends up with it there. NC State shot 55% from the floor in the first half as that three will fall for Emily Ebert. They need a couple of those. They went three for 10 from beyond the arc in the first half. No way around it. Kansas State has to make threes in the second half if they want to stay in it, stay within striking distance. Part of it is because they need support around Lee. The other part is because NC State shoots the three so well. How about a alley-oop pass to Kai Crutchfield? <laughs> It's very rare that you throw an alley-oop to a 5'9 guard, but Crutchfield has the hops. And that's why they call that play for her. In the end, this was really well defended because Crutchfield got up. Yeah, she had the ups there. But so did Glenn. Jakia Brown-Turner. Out to Perez. Crutchfield now, two to shoot, bounce pass to Elisa Kinane at the buzzer. That is her first points of the game. Only played three and a half minutes in the first half. Well done by Crutchfield to attack, draw Yoki Lee, make her take a step towards her, and to get her senior an easy two to get her going. Both Kinane and Aoka Lee, two fouls apiece. Sundell 
now has 14. Crutchfield went for the steal, got one step behind Sundell, and she made them pay. Serena Sundell, the true freshman, is keeping Kansas State in this ballgame. Jakia Brown Turner, so methodic. Six foot junior out of Maryland, had 15 points in the first round game. JBT is silky smooth. She just makes it look easy. You see Kansas State today, Serena Sundell, 14 points, rest of the team, 18. Sundell, five for eight. Here she is once again, thought about the three. Now kicks. Ebert back to Sundell, got to get a shot off. And a tough one at that. Almost banked in the three. There's Yogi Lee on the offensive rebound. That is K-State's first offensive rebound of the game. Jakia Brown-Turner back the other way. The step through. She's got seven now. The problem when you dig yourself a hole against NC State is that they're not going to stop scoring. It's so difficult to get consistent stops, to get three stops in a row. And that is definitely going to be a foul on Aoka Lee. That's her third personal foul. We talked about the physicality inside. Kunain and Lee battling it out. They both were pushing on each other. Yoki Lee leaned in a bit, lowered her shoulder at the last second, and Elisa Kunain sold it a little bit. But yeah, I was going to say. Hey, that's what you have to do, both those players. Kunain was tired of sitting on the bench. <laughs> Yeah, Kanane, this NC State team, a lot of seniors, it's a senior-led team. Kanane hasn't been direct by saying this will be her last game inside Reynolds Coliseum, but... She basically yes, has. We she can has read said the tea it leaves. without saying it. She has not talked about coming back for a COVID year. She has played four excellent years here at NC State, and it looks like she's going to be moving on to the WNBA draft. These two great post players going at it. It's that know, final Kelly. push. I don't know, Kelly. That's a little exaggeration. Did you not see her lean in and I shove her? Know. She shoved her with her hands, Sam. <laughs> Look, you gotta, you gotta sell it. There's no doubt about it, but she extended the arm with I, the shove. I hear you. And you can't do that when you have two fouls. You just have to hold back. Kayla Jones. Now in double figures with 11. Starting to open up now, 51-34. Sundell's three is short. This is also going to be Kayla Jones's last game in Reynolds Coliseum, and she is putting together quite a performance. Has scored in the mid-range, hit that three in the first quarter, has scored at the rim. How about 11, 5, and 3 so far for the fifth-year senior? We also have Reina Perez, Kai Crutchfield, an experienced group, graduate players who came back with a purpose. Certainly bowing out of the NCAA tournament early last year left a bad taste in a lot of these players' mouths, and they're back for vengeance. Kayla Jones, back-to-back -back baskets, 13 points now for her. And it's not very often in life, Sam, you get a second chance. No, Without that COVID year, Crutchfield and Jones, their careers would be done. They wouldn't have had the opportunity. And Perez to come back. And Kayla Jones was very open with us, and she's aware of that. She's aware of the opportunity they get. She's so grateful to have that extra year. And you can see it, especially in this game so far. Riley Glenn, her three is off the mark. Neither of the Glenn twins have scored yet in this game. Jakia Brown-Turner for three. Offensive rebound for Kai Crutchfield. Kicks it back out, Perez. Oh, the Hezzy for Perez! That's too pretty, Kelly. Reina Perez just playing with him right now. Crossover, pull it back, go right back to the spot. She has K-State on skates. And a timeout for head coach Jeff Mitty. And the sea of red comes alive inside Reynolds Coliseum. How great was this, Kelly? You know, Sam, sometimes when it's raining, it can get uh. slippery. <laughs>
It got slippery there for Serena Sundell. 14,000, yes, that's correct, 14,000 Iowa fans. And we already have two double-digit seeds in the Sweet 16, Creighton and South Dakota. If we get another, that would be an all-time record in the women's tournament. We have never seen three double-digit seeds advance to the Sweet 16. Aoka Lee's shot is blocked. Kai Crutchfield back the other way. Pass to Diamond Johnson. Acrobatic shot in midair. Couldn't get it to go. So there are a couple more double-digit seats playing today, Kelly. Who, who would be your pick if there was to be one more to get that upset as Sundell hits what is her third three of the game? Sundell has been great, but in terms of the double-digit seats, Belmont and okay. Tennessee, I think Belmont has a chance. Tennessee still not playing their best ball. They've had some injuries, but of course that game is in Knoxville, so that's going to be difficult. And then what about Princeton yeah. and Indiana? Princeton is a very confident team. They know who they are. They know what they want to do. I know you called a few Princeton games this year, sure and, and you think they definitely have the, the ability to pull off another upset. Uh, Caleb Baruby, UConn graduate and played on their national title team in 95. has done a great job at Princeton. Abby Myers is an excellent yes. player. And by the way, they hold, hold teams to about 50 points a game. But they're playing a team that can hit a ton of threes. So that'll be a, uh, something to keep an eye on there. Diamond Johnson, corner three. Wow. They just keep on hitting six threes in the game as Diamond Johnson now has nine points. And she's a perfect three for three. I know we don't want to look too far ahead, Sam, but Diamond Johnson, the sixth player of the year in the ACC this year, keep an eye on her next year. Maybe it gets some preseason player of the year votes. Who knows? Another great point guard. Dana Evans from Louisville went from sixth player of the year to a two-time ACC player of the year. I feel like Diamond Johnson could take a similar route. Canadian thought about the three. Johnson also did as well. Floater there as Ayoka Lee brings in the rebound. That's her fifth. Ayoka Lee's got 10 points, five boards, 20 double-doubles on the year, which broke her own single season record. It's always nice when you can break your own records. Right. Ball knocked out. Step aside, NC State breaking this thing open a little bit. Two and a half left to go. It has been an exciting weekend here in Raleigh, NC State, Sport Region. How about this? ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips is in town. Take a look at, at, at kind of his schedule. Last weekend was at Notre Dame's men's basketball first four win, then went to Milwaukee for Friday's Virginia Tech men's basketball game. Fort Worth Saturday, Greenville for Duke and Miami's wins, and now he's here. That's well, dedication. First of all, I know he enjoyed Greenville, South Carolina, because it is a great town. I'm sure he had fun. And Duke and Miami both won from the ACC. He is here taking in NC State, got that NC State tie on, and he has attended a home game for every men's and women's basketball team this year in the ACC. He was there for every game of the ACC women's tournament and the ACC men's tournament. So he has seen a lot of hoops over the last couple of months. My question, Sam, is what tie does he wear if we see NC State Notre Dame That's in the Sweet question. 16? Yeah. I don't know if he has anything that's red and gold. I, I don't know how many ties they make in that <laughs> probably, variation. Probably not too many. Maybe go no tie on that one, yeah. perhaps. It is 58-37, Jada Boyd in on the post, follows it up, gets the foul and the basket. Jada Boyd with four points. Jada Boyd out here padding those stats, getting another rebound, misses the first, gonna add a rebound to her stat line, and then goes right back up with it. Didn't even have to bring that ball down. Sam goes right back up with it. That is the fourth foul on Ayoka Lee. The Wolfpack have done a great job of attacking her on almost every play. It's an excellent balance of shooting threes because they are 6 of 11. But the vast majority of their shots have still been inside the arc and in the paint. And when you have a player like Ayoka Lee that is so dominant, you have to attack her. Make her think about things on the defensive end, not just the foul trouble as she heads to the bench, but also making her play both ends where she can't catch her breath. She's got to continue to guard Hobby, guard Kunane, figure out which guards are attacking the paint on defense, 
and have to carry her team on the offensive end. So I think NC State has just done a great job against her today. Fresh contact in for Jada Boyd. No problem at the free throw line. Completes the and one opportunity. And 35 left to go here in the third quarter where NC State has just continued to grow their lead. They're a very young but talented Kansas State team. Sloan Goodrich also just likes, and maybe this is part of the youth, just some hesitation on Kansas State's side on this end of the floor especially. There are a few players on that Kansas State scout that NC State has just decided to not guard beyond the three-point line, and that really hurts Kansas State because of Aoka Lee inside. It makes things more crowded in the paint. Kanane on a mission there with the reverse under a minute to go. She is so skilled. Just one of the most skilled five players that you'll see on both the men's or women's side. Sundell, really tough shot. Reyna Perez hits the triple. Reyna Perez, her third three of the afternoon. 15 points to lead the team. All smiles for Reyna Perez. This is also her last game in Reynolds Coliseum. Coliseum and it has been a memorable one for her so far. 15 points. Three of six from three. I love how aggressive she's been scoring the ball at the beginning of the game, both against Longwood and today against Kansas State, looking for her own shot. Averages over three assists per game. She can certainly dish it out. Lyman Johnson off to the right. One second remaining. And out of bounds with point one to go here in the third quarter. The Wolfpack are having fun with it today, aren't they, Sam? They certainly are. Ball inbound to Kanane. They'll take the buzzer to the corner there. Reina Perez, I mean, what she has done for this team in the NCAA tournament so far, 15 points today, 16 points in the first round game. She is on fire for the pack. Kelly, just a couple of years ago, she didn't really even know anything about Westmore or NC State. Her journey is so unique. She is a sixth year player here in college who started at Northern Arizona. One of the last athletes still playing that had to sit out when she transferred to Cal State Fullerton was an absolute baller at Fullerton, Big West Player of the Year. And that's when she started to gather notice from some of the Power Five schools. The story goes that Westmore was in need of a point guard because Ace Koenig was graduating. She was the point guard on NC State's first of the of three ACC championship teams. And he heard about Reina Perez. He called her. He left a voicemail. And Perez didn't answer. She listened to the voicemail, and she said she didn't know what <laughs> NC State was, where it was. And her brother said, you need to call them back. They're pretty good. Yeah. So he convinced Perez to call Westmore back. She visited and committed. And of course, the rest is history. This is her second year with the pack. She also hit the game winner in last year's ACC title game. But quite the unique journey for Reina Perez to Raleigh. No question about it. And this, these experienced players are having great games in what could be and what are their last games inside Reynolds Coliseum as the and one falls for Kayla Jones. That play is exactly how you beat a zone. You hit the high post or the mid post and you have your four player cut to the rim. That's how you do it. 16 for Jones, she's seven for eight from the floor. NC State shooting 57% from the field as a team. And Sam, you mentioned to me at halftime, how much will we see Kunane just because you yeah. want to rest her? She did tweak that ankle in the ACC championship game, even though it seems fine now. You're up big. We haven't seen much of Elisa Kunane in the second half. She had foul trouble in the first half. 
four points, two rebounds for her. Still just has those two fouls, but she's enjoying it right now from the bench. And I'm not sure how much more we will see of Reina Perez either with this game almost out of reach for Kansas State. Into Camille Hobby. Ayoko Lee's got four fouls. Hobby fading away. Diamond Johnson on the follow in a fresh 20. We got a couple of really good games possibly coming up later today in UConn. We got Tennessee as well. What are you looking forward to watching later this evening? So many great games. We are the first one. We're the opening act. And you've got Tennessee and Belmont. Belmont is a team that could pull an upset. UConn and UCF, old American rivals. UCF has a great defense. Can they score enough to keep up with the Huskies? We know Tennessee fans and UConn fans will be tuning in as both those teams try to get back to the Final Four. Camille Hobby misses the shot there. I don't think Camille Hobby's uh, addition to this game can be underscored enough. What, what she did coming in with Elisa Kinane, getting those two early fouls. Hobby has been a storyline, no doubt. Aoka Lee just doesn't quit. I don't know how she got that rebound. Got her own miss, even though she was fading out because of the layup. But I'm just so impressed with her mobility, her focus, her mindset. She has quite a few, no matter how many years she wants to take, she technically has two years left at Kansas State. They can build around her, and K-State is going to continue to be a problem in the Big 12. Jakia Brown, Turner, 10 to shoot. He talked about it. She's just so smooth, nine points. For Jakia Brown Turner and all second team honors at the ACC tournament this year. And the numbers keep rising for everybody on this team. Foul goes against Hobby underneath the hoop. It's her first. Let me ask you this, Kelly. If there is one thing that does concern you or is something that NC State needs to focus on the rest of this tournament, again, got to win this one here. But if there's one thing that concerns you about this team, if anything. <laughs> that is a tough question, Sam Ravich, because I think when you look at what they do on the floor, it's tough to pick something out. They've been very good defensively. They've been shooting the rock well, but they haven't really been settling for too many threes. They've been sharing the ball, playing through their post. Diamond Johnson is on fire. I think the one thing that concerns me is the bigger picture, something that the players have brushed off saying it's not a big deal. But it's the pressure. Yeah. The pressure of getting back or getting to a Final Four. This group has never made a Final Four. NC State has only made one Final Four, and that was back in 1998. They actually have never advanced to the Elite Eight except for that one year in 1998. So handling the pressure when you get to Bridgeport and you see all of those UConn fans that are going to be in Bridgeport, Connecticut, that's my biggest concern, but it's nothing on the basketball floor. As you see Reina Perez leaving the floor for her, the last time, we think, in an NC State jersey in terms of today. This will be her last game in Raleigh. Zaya James, the freshman into the game, saw her on SC Top 10 the other night. Gets the assist there, 18 points now for KJ. Moore on the drive. She got fouled. Jada Moore, 5'11 sophomore out of Denver, will head to the free throw line. Right, make sure you catch the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One on ESPN. Sweet 16 and Elite Eight are March 25th through the 28th, the final four from Minneapolis. That'll begin Friday, April 1st. Games at 7 and 9.30 on ESPN. And then it all comes down to the championship game Sunday, April 3rd at 8 Eastern on ESPN. As Kayla Jones also gets a standing ovation as she goes to the bench, a graduate player. It is seemingly their final time playing on this floor. Well deserved to get these curtain calls. And just a shout out to these NC State fans. They have packed this place out. I love how Wolfpack Nation supports women's hoops. We thought with a 4 o'clock tip, because yep. it's a Monday, this place might not be as full, but it is a sellout. Everyone is here. 
Wolfpack Nation is here, and I just want to shout out this fan base because they've done a great job supporting their team. And of course, their team reciprocates. This is a great product to watch, but these fans truly show up. Well, they average just under 5,000 fans uh, during the regular season. That's good for top 15 nationally. They love their basketball here. Diamond Johnson just continues to put the pressure on. She has not missed a three today, Kelly. Five for five with 15 points. <laughs> she has been unreal off the bench, shooting lights out. And that's an added component that they have this year that they did not have last year. Diamond Johnson is a transfer from Rutgers, came in this year and, and accepted her role coming off the bench, even though she was all Big Ten last year. But to be able to bring that type of scorer off the bench is a luxury for Westmore. Jada Boyd. The junior from Petersburg, Virginia, also gets a standing ovation as Westmore starts to implement some of the younger players on this team. Madison Hayes into the game. Isaiah with the basket there. Isaiah James is going to be a star. I can't wait to see her in a bigger role next year. She made the Sports Center top 10 in their game versus Longwood. She is a scorer. The Wolfpack fans are going to love watching her. 81-46, 4.44 left to go. The number one seed, NC State, on the verge of reaching their fourth consecutive Sweet 16. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by Capital One. What's in your wallet? All right, Kelly Gramblick, let's take a look at today's Capital One rewarding performance. Well, you know it's got to be the woman who's been making it, Reyna. Reyna Perez, she has been excellent in her final game in Reynolds Coliseum, 15 points. How about six, six rebounds, four assists for good measure, but it's been the three ball. Three for seven from beyond the arc. The smile says it all, Sam. Sure does. How many more making it Reyna puns are we gonna come up with the rest of the, the, rest of the tournament? When does our game end and when will they force me off air? <laughs> At some point, I feel like someone's just going to show up and take this microphone away from me. Yeah. Because of my reign of puns, but I will not stop. Some I feel like yeah, they just need than, to be used. Some are better than others. <laughs> if I'm getting honest. the vibe that Sam may be embarrassed to be working with me at this time, <laughs> but you know what? You're stuck with me, Sam. <laughs> and if Raina, it's really Raina's fault because she right? keeps no, making right. it Raina. I'm with you there. Anyone 48, NC State. Commanding lead right now, looking to advance to the Sweet 16 for the fourth straight year. But looking for a better result this year than last. Jalen Glenn, top of the key for three. She's got five points now. bounds will be K-State basketball. All right, so we talked about at the top of our show how we had a couple of All-Americans and Elisa Kinane as well as Ayoka Lee. How about these All-Americans? It's going to be a good battle on the U. Nas Hillman and Maddie Segris, both of these players can score the rock. Nas Hillman is another one of those great post players. You look at their numbers in the first round. Villanova pulled the upset of BYU. Michigan advanced pretty easily, so what's going to happen in this one? Michigan has yet to lose at home this year, and I wonder how Villanova, who's a smaller team, is going to be able to guard Nas Hillman. They're going to have to bring doubles to try to slow her down, so that's going to be a fun one with two very, very good players. That's Briley Glenn. She's got seven. Here's James for three, that's no good. Goodrich on the drive, offensive foul. It was set. Genesis Bryant, tough charge there. This is such a smart play from Genesis Bryant. She sees Goodrich has picked up her dribble. 
and telegraphed a bit where she's going, and Genesis Bryant stood her ground. That charge doesn't feel good, people, okay? That hurts, but Genesis Bryant took one for the team. A great play. Hart's also into the game now as that shot will fall for Jada Moore. Or excuse me, that's Timmons. First basket of the game. All right, so let's say hypothetically, Kelly, as that one's stolen away, you, you see the bench come alive, Bryant in the open floor up and in for two. Let's say hypothetically that NC State and UConn do indeed match up in the Bridgeport region. I know there's been a lot of fuss made about NC State and UConn being in the same region and that region being in Bridgeport. We'll talk a little about that, but Ayoka Lee coming out of the game now. She'll also get a nice ovation from the NC State faithful. Also because Lisa Kinane coming back into the game along with Kai Crutchfield. I thought maybe Wes Moore would put her back in because she didn't really get a curtain call right. just because of the foul trouble. But the NC State-UConn matchup, if we get it, is going to be must-watch television. How does Nelson Adota fare against Kunane? That's going to be a great matchup. And then, of course, with Beckers. Is she able to look? She has looked like herself lately, but is she able to go out there and score 20? Because that's what UConn will need. Kai Crutchfield will most likely get the task of trying to slow down Beckers. Crutchfield, one of the best defenders in the ACC. And then who shoots it better? I think the three-point line is going to be incredibly important. If NC State shoots it like they did today, 9 of 19 from the three-point line, if they can make 10 or so, I think that would be a game-changer. But slowing down Beckers is going to be huge for NC State. And then I think on the flip side, UConn being able to slow down Elisa Kunane. If we get there, Sam. If we get there. If we get there. There's a lot of ifs. And the ovation for Kai Crutchfield. all around that's a that's got to be an emotional feeling Kelly uh, I know that it has to be emotional on both sides for player coach fan what do you remember from the last time you stepped on the floor well it's interesting because these players because you're hosting right you almost get two senior nights in a weird way so yeah. they had their normal senior night which is so emotional it's tough to even play basketball after that because your entire career is flashing before your eyes. But these players get a, a second one, if you will. And so I think it's a little easier with this one to stay in the moment because you really don't know that your season isn't over. I mean, obviously it's not for this NC State team. They're going to continue to play. But I just love the ovation. And I love that hug between Elisa Kunane and Coach Aaron Bath, who is the recruiting coordinator for NC State and has been with Kunane all four years, helped recruit her. Kunane talked about their relationship yesterday. It's the assistant coaches that don't necessarily get the publicity, but put in so much work every day with these student athletes. Laura Mackey fouled on the shot. Yoka Lee. What an excellent season it has been for her and this Kansas State team. Might not be the result they wanted here in the second round game, but an 11 win improvement from last year to this year. They won nine games all year last year. They have now won 20 games this season. And Jeff Mitty, certainly a congratulations are in order for him and everybody watching back home in Manhattan, Kansas. Zaya James, similar kind of move she put on SC Top 10 last night. Got fouled. And K-State will return all five starters, at yeah. least in terms of eligibility. And those three freshmen, the Glenn Twins and Serena Sundell, have learned so much, playing this much, 
as freshmen. So I can't wait to see them in their second year. And then Aoka Lee has confirmed she is returning. She loves college basketball, loves playing at Kansas State, wants to get her degree, wants to become a sports psychologist. So we know she's coming back. The, the future is very bright for this Kansas State squad. Jump ball, possession arrow stays with NC State. Minute and 12 left to go before this Wolfpack crew punch their ticket to the Sweet 16. More games to be played on our network later this afternoon and evening. More tickets punched to the Sweet 16 are in order. Do you know what my other takeaway is from this game, Sam? Longwood is good. Yes. Longwood played NC State pretty well yesterday. And they were fun to watch in this this little pod that we got to call as well. Five seconds left to go here in the game. Riley Glenn another three. That's off the mark. Crowd on their feet. About nine second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Sophie Hart back out. Genesis Bryant. Isaiah James back into Hart. And she got fouled. Count the basket. And the crowd goes crazy. The bench is losing their minds as Sophie Hart, the 6'5 freshman out of Minnesota, puts together a strong move and gets the and one. She's a part of the future for NC State. She has battled against Elisa Kunain in practice every day this year. I mean, what an education to have to go up against Elisa Kunain and Camille Hobby every day in practice. So. She's going to be a big part of the front court for NC State in years to come. Talk about a team effort. All 13 players have scored for NC State here this afternoon. Listen to this crowd as they send NC State off to their fourth consecutive Sweet 16. 